Good morning. Welcome to Tomahawk Christian Church. If you're visiting with us, we pray that you feel welcome. Welcome to all the mothers here. And as I said earlier, even if you are not an official mother, if you are involved in a church family and you are a lady, you, we celebrate you this Mother's Day because you've impacted somebody's life somewhere as a woman of God. Looking at our uh, announcements this morning, it is Mother's Day, so for you in the vestibule, we have uh, some down files, which are pretty nice. You'll receive a flower on your way out. There's also some COVID test kits there for you, moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please take them so I can get rid of them. And there are dozens of eggs down in the downstairs refrigerator, so please help yourself to at least a dozen eggs, if not uh, authorities will be making a lot of deviled eggs, pickled eggs, egg salad. There's nothing wrong with eggs. If you can't get downstairs, ask one of the youth here to run down there for you, grab you a dozen eggs. Um, there's a lot of birthdays up there, but David told me I have to mention his. So David's cookie's birthday. Let's have a big hand for David. Please check your bulletins for the upcoming events. This week in particular is the board meeting, the community meal, Pioneer Club. And please pay attention to the camps that are coming up, as well as the VBS meeting in two weeks. Any other announcements? Okay, looking at our prayers, look at our continuing prayer list, please. And we had Mike and Naya added to continuing <coughs> prayer. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, I'll read scripture this morning, which comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary. And lose heart. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll have an opening prayer by Alan. We'll go to the Lord in song. Heavenly Father, we, we praise your holy name and thank you for this opportunity to gather together to worship you. We ask that you bless us in this worship today. Father, we also understand and, and Appreciate all the mothers and women of the congregation, Father. We ask that you bless them and be with them this day and every day. What, uh, continue your care over them and, and be with them all. Father, we also pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us, to guide us and lead us in this worship today. We pray that you will open our hearts to the words that are brought to us through the scriptures today and through the preaching. Bless the preacher, bless us as listeners, Father, and help us to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Two other quick things as Sarah comes up. Um, thank you to those who continue to help with the cemetery. Also, um, we did deliver the shoe boxes down to uh, Fairfax. Thanks, Ed, for doing that. They were so happy with what the church and school were doing to help the Ukrainians. They gave him some free sausage and chocolate. Which uh, And there was a great article in the paper, if you didn't see it, I'll hang it in the back, and they mentioned Tomahawk Christian Church in supporting that mission, so thank you guys. Alright, if you want to follow along in your hymn books, we're going to sing, uh, it's page 423, but Faith of Our Mothers. Uh, the first and the last stanza.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Got a neat If you don't have communion, we have some in the back. Um, go ahead and take this time to open it up. Also, we'll be studying today in 1 Peter 2, 18. That's 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, 18. So 1 Peter 2, 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the unjust. So Peter here is talking to the church about unjust suffering. Here specifically he's talking to servants. Now, he is talking specifically to servants, but he's talking indirectly to us as well. 19. For this gracious thing, when my poor God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. So he's saying here that it is um, a gracious thing to suffer unjustly. He would later call us to suffer unjustly. 20. For what credit is it when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But when you do good and you <coughs> suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So he's saying, just like we see in Romans 12, 19 through 20, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He is saying, what good is it if you suffer and are beaten, so you have consequences. But if you suffer and there is no consequences, you don't return evil for evil, but you return love for evil. He is saying that if you uh, truly suffer unjustly, you take no vengeance against the person. 21. For you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Now here we'll see two things. We'll see the example that Jesus left us, and then we'll see more importantly what Jesus did for us. So the example that he left for us was in 22. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. So, of course, we know Jesus committed no sin, sin throughout his whole life. He had no deceit in him. 22. He committed no sin. I'm oh, sorry. 23. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued to entrust himself to the one who judges justly. So, what is he saying here? He is saying that even though evil was done to him, he did no even back to the Lord. But he entrusted himself to the one who just, judges uh, justly, and that would be God. He trusted himself to God, even uh, all those things happened to him. In 24 and 25, Peter here is actually quoting a little differently, but Isaiah 53, 5, 1 through 6. In 24, he says, He bore himself. He bore our sins in his body on a tree, that we might die to sin and live righteously. Righteously. But by his wounds you have been healed. So this is not the example of Paul. This is what he did for us. He came to earth, lived a sinful, a sinless life, and died on his cross for us. 25. For you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and the overseers of your souls. So you were straying like sheep. And then God came, and when you come before him and you accept him, you are no longer strained. You are now with the shepherd again. And you will be with him again once we go to heaven. Now, I chose this passage instead of a, a different one because we focus a lot of times on the Last Supper, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a good thing. We should remember that when we come to Christ for uh, communion. But we also have to remember that it wasn't just his sacrifice that saved us. It was the sinless life he led that is what was able, what made him able to die on the cross, a sinless life, life bearing our sins and then rising again three days later that saved us. So as we go into our time of communion, I'd like you to remember that, yes, we should be remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, but we also need to remember what he did for us throughout his life of not sinning, leading 
perfect example of what our learners should be and how we can strive to be more like them. We always say we need to prepare our hearts for a win. Uh, we take communion, and that is true. About what, how we are living our lives and how we've done it. So, if you please join me in prayer, and then we'll take the communion. Lord, thanks for letting us be able to gather to the table freely. Please let us be able to examine our hearts and minds and be able to take what we learned today in our lesson through our daily lives and be able to be more like you. And be able to not do evil for evil, but like Jesus Christ did. We turn evil for good. And maybe we can make this uh, earth a better place, a place like you wanted it to be. In Jesus' name. Children, honor your parents uh, every day, but do something special for them too today. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you for how you work through your Holy Spirit, how you minister to each one of us. So say exactly what we need to hear at the right time. Lord, thank you for your word. I thank you. Lord, for uh, ministering to us. Lord, we uh, thank you for our mamas. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for their precious faith. Uh, Lord, we pray that we will be true to you and to remember the faith and, and walk with you uh, each and every day and be your people and be a holy people and uh, look forward, God, to your return. Bless our mamas. Bless our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Our, uh, our main text today is be Mark chapter 14 and verses 3 through 9. Mark chapter 14 and verses 3 through 9. By the way, see all y'all here. God bless you. Uh, right on here. Mark chapter 14, 3 through 9. While he, now this is Jesus, while he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the Lever, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. Made of pure nard, she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Notice what Jesus said. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time that you want. But you will not always have me. And this next part is part of my focus in on uh, verse 8 here. She did what she could. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand <clears throat> to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached, throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. 
Many women today are so concerned that they can't do something more noticeable. Women are trying more than ever to find their place in the world. There are certainly cases of women of God that God called to do great things that were also noticeable. There are those cases. For example, uh, Deborah, a mighty warrior in the time of the judges. Phoebe, a deaconess in the early church in the book of Acts. Lydia, uh, a worshiper of God, a merchant in purple cloth, and also a key member, if not the original member, of the church at Philippi. So we definitely have those examples. What would God want you to do? Would God want you to run for sheriff, to be a professor, to become president of a company, or president of the country? All of those things are potentially well within the possibility of what God may have for you. But to me, we need to ask another question first. Who? Who does God want you to be? Who does God want you to be? And then, what does God want you to do? You see, I think especially when we're young, we think that we have to make this huge mark on life or do a huge thing, this outstanding event or this outstanding career that, that sometimes we miss who God calls us to be first and what God calls us to do immediately after that. God has called all of us to surrender to his son Jesus Christ and be baptized and be faithful unto Jesus and to be led by the Holy Spirit and to be holy just as he is holy. Sometimes we get so focused on doing some great thing without first being who God wants us to be in our walk with him. And that eventually could destroy us. In fact, in ministry, I can think of many guys in Bible college and people in general that were very gifted, very talented, great speakers, great musicians, I mean, just phenomenal gifts. But they didn't keep God first and didn't continue to walk with Him. We must keep God first. Micah 6 8 says this He has showed us what is good. And what does the Lord require? To do justly? To love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. There are many women in the Bible, there are many women in the Bible that have set good and godly examples for all of us. I'm going to mention some of those. At the cross of Jesus, it says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 55, many women were there watching from a distance, specifically Mary the mother of James, Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary the mother of the sons of Zebedee and Salome were all found at the foot of the cross. All of the men, with the exception of John the Apostle, had scattered and disappeared. The ladies were there to the very end for Jesus. In the prayer meeting, it says, they continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is mentioned there as well. <clears throat> this was uh, when Matthias was chosen to replace Judas. In fact, the scriptures show us that prayer meeting and worship meeting were very important to the early Christians, and they should be to us as well today. In the house of Simon the Pharisee, an unnamed woman weeps and washes Jesus' feet with her tears, kisses his feet, and anoints him with oil in Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. In the synagogue, it mentions an unnamed woman uh, bent over it with an infirmity for 18 years, she was still faithful in worship. Among the Gentiles in Tyre and Sidon, uh, an unnamed woman expressed great faith that was not commonly found among the Jews. It says, uh, she says this, True, Lord, yet even the dogs, even the Gentiles, eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. We also have the example of the widow and her two mites who honored God even in her poverty. She set a great example for the disciples. Now back to Bethany. The woman who anointed Jesus with the costly perfume. When the deed was, when the deed was criticized, Jesus answered, Leave her alone. She has done what she could. And that is what God expects of each of us. To do what we can. 
It seemed like such a small thing, but it was commended by the Lord Jesus. So much so that it's taught where the gospel is preached today. So often, we as people are, get so consumed with trying to accomplish this huge thing. We try to, uh, for, uh, we sometimes actually forget the overwhelming importance. We sometimes forget the overwhelming importance of being faithful in what seems to be the smaller thing first. Jesus said, he who can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. And also, Jesus said, if anyone is one of these little children of mine, a drink of cold water in my name, he certainly will not lose his reward. We're getting ready to do vacation Bible school here pretty soon. There will be many opportunities to help the little ones in Jesus' name. Being a woman of God, a loving wife, and a godly mother are some of the most important things that can possibly be on this planet. I'm going to say that again. Being a woman of God, a wife, a godly mother are some of the most important things you can possibly be on this planet. Marriage and God honoring a motherhood ought to be held in very high regard by the people of God, by individuals, and by the churches as well. Being, being a mom is far more than a profession, but it also is one of the most notable professions that a woman can be and do. The world will sometimes try to make you feel like uh, like you're less important. Like you have to see that conversation at least all the time. What do you do? Oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Oh. <laughs> right? I mean, you've seen that before, right? I mean, just be honest, you've seen that before. Listen, it's a wonderful thing to be a mom who stays at home and helps your children. And you know, that's it's actually mentioned in the scriptures. Now listen, if you're working outside, that's okay. It's going to be a good mom, okay? It's a really mom that loves Jesus and sets a good example. Okay? Um, the world will sometimes try to make you feel like, uh, oh, what do you do? I, I, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and that discussion you see a lot. But can I tell you, can I tell you, moms, you are doing something great. You are doing something good. You are doing something God-honoring that fulfills part of His purpose for your life and for your family. That you matter. Moms, you matter. Matter big time. I mean, honestly, I was thinking through the scriptures. As far as the emphasis of helping little ones, okay, for dads, what's it say? You know, uh, love your wife, or the husbands love your wives. It says uh, discipline your children, right? You know, raise them correctly. There's some in Proverbs about teaching them. But man, if you look at the scriptures overall, when it comes to helping little ones and teaching little ones, the emphasis is there with mamas and the, and the impact that you mamas can have over the long haul. It's just amazing. I'm going to get some whew, whew, emotions coming to me. But um, memories. So um, you can have a profound impact on your children's lives. You matter immensely. You are making a profound difference for the kingdom of God, helping to help mold and shape the hearts of future generations, and into eternity. You matter to God. You matter to your husbands. You matter to your families. You matter to your children, even when they're being, as Ellie says, noxious. I can't say I'm noxious yet. <laughs> <laughs> even when they're being noxious. So uh, you matter to them too, okay? M motherhood is by no means easy, small, or unimportant. It has a profound influence. It is vitally important and should be respected and honored. And if you're not honoring your mamas already, shame on you. Because God wants you to. Make sure you honor your mamas. And if your mama's not still around, then honor another lady in the faith and help encourage her in her walk with God as well. Every day is a gift. Every time you pray with your child at night or eat a meal or read the scriptures with your child or spend time with your child or you watch over them when they're sick or you comfort them when they fall, you are honoring the Lord and making an eternal difference. Whew, I'm an emotional wreck today. <laughs> ah, all these memories of mama, grandmama, 
Baby girl and Denise, everything just emotions just hit me all at once. Um, you are honoring the Lord and making an eternal difference. Uh, so, so let's stop focusing on on so much on trying to accomplish something great in the world's eyes. Let's stop focusing so much on trying to accomplish something great in the world's eyes and be faithful and accomplish something great in the eyes of God. Being a godly mom. Set the example for your children. Love and discipline them. And in the end, you will be remembered by your children who love, and, and you will and be rewarded by your children who love God in most cases. Rewarded by your children who love God first, who serve Him, who help build up others, and who are faithful to Jesus as well. Perhaps God has allowed you to be a mom. If so, keep honoring the Lord. However, perhaps you've not been able to. May I encourage you to look for other opportunities to invest in and help the next generation of believers. Perhaps teaching a Sunday school class or serving in the nursery or uh, excuse me, ser serving in a Christian camp or being a youth sponsor or simply just reading or encouraging little ones in the Lord when you see them. Remember the woman who anointed Jesus with perfume. It seemed like such a small thing, didn't it? But it wasn't. She did not prevent his death, but she anointed his body beforehand. She didn't prevent the treachery of Judas. She didn't relieve any of the suffering of Jesus. Her act was a great expression of love and concern. That is all. But how precious are such deeds of kindness. I'd like to throw some ideas out there for you. What if you lovingly greeted every child as they came to church. I can think back to my childhood, and yes, I'm so thankful for my mom and grandma, but I can remember other ladies in the faith. A Sunday school teacher, there was a, a lady who lived in a little shack, honestly. I mean, just a, honestly, it was the size of the shed outside. Two of them lived in that little itty bitty house. And Miss Gladys Brown, she was there every Sunday. And uh, I can remember uh, her just being there and praying and asking how I was doing, and she would she would uh, she give me a stick of juicy fruit bubble gum every week. <laughs> Something seems so small, so insignificant, and what a profound impact that she had on my life as well. And y'all can have that same impact on our little ones today by just loving them and being good to them in these what seem to be small acts, but they're not they're huge in the life of a child. What if you encourage a parent who may be going through a tough time? What if you greeted every new person that comes to church? What if you paid for a child to be able to go to church camp? These are just different ideas. What if you prayed about or adopted a child of your own? I haven't spoke of my mom, my grandma, or Denise often in messages, uh, but today I'm going to. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says this. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am now persuaded it lives in you also. My grandmother's name literally is Lois. She's a humble woman of great faith, love of God, righteousness, and filled with God's love. She's very strong in the faith. <laughs> she won't put up with a bunch of junk. <laughs> She'll tell you like it is, but she does, does so in a loving and gentle way. Lord willing, tomorrow she will be 92 years old. <laughs> My mom, Kathy, is a woman of great faith and love uh, the Word of God as well. When my father passed away when I was three, my mama moved back home to live with her parents, Lois and Roger Hart. Mom went back to college to get a teaching degree in U.S. history. Excuse me. So, my, so most of the early members... So most of my early memories are of Grandma fixing meals, going to church, teaching me God's Word, having company over after church, praying for me and praying with me. While I hate the circumstances of losing my father, I hate that. I am forever... Y'all, I apologize. I am not normally this emotional. But they're just, these things are just tapping into some deep, deep, deep memories. Um... 
While I hate the circumstances of losing my father, I am forever grateful of the time that God allowed me to spend with my grandparents growing up. My mom weathered the personal storm of losing my father, and during that time, her favorite verse became... <laughs> God works all, all things to the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God works all, all things to the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. My mom's faith grew even deeper during that time. She loves the Lord, she loves his word, and always has words of wisdom, <clears throat> words of wisdom to help me through life. I am so thankful that just like Timothy, God allowed me to be raised by two women of God. And I truly consider it the greatest treasure of my life, other than a walk with Jesus. It's the greatest treasure I have. I'm, I'm thankful to God that, that just like Timothy, God allowed me to be raised by two women of God, whether it was going to church, which uh, which we never missed. Man, I have a wreck. <laughs> I apologize, y'all. I'm sorry. Whether we're going to church, which we never missed, unless we were really, really, really sick, or, or praying, or studying God's Word, or going to visit people, or, or taking food, I will always be thankful for God allowing me be born into a family that loves Jesus as much as, as my family loves Jesus. On the, on the side note, I can remember bringing girlfriends. This is true. Yeah. Take a break here, okay? Whew. Everybody breathe. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I, I can all, uh, on a side note, I can always remember bringing girlfriends to Grandma's house. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, that's what I did. Um, because honestly, a God a God fearing woman who uh, walks closely with God. And usually they have remarkable discernment. Remarkable discernment. Why? They spent that time in the scripture. They have life experience. So I, I would take my girlfriends home to meet grandma. And to me, uh, whether, whether I, uh, when, whenever I dated a girl, I always uh, took her to, grand, to, to grandma's house. Because frankly, that was extremely important to me. I, I loved and trusted my grandmother. And I still do. And what she said had a profound influence on my life. Whenever I dated, dated a girl, they always had to pass the grandma test. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they had to pass the grandma test. Okay? I'd bring her to grandma's house and uh, let grandma spend some time with her. Right? And uh, then I would ask grandma, grandma, what do you think? What advice do you have for me? And grandma would either, uh, she was very humble. She's one of strong faith and courage. And she would, she would answer me honestly. She would say, I like this one, or I don't like that one. <laughs> she let me know. All right, so uh, good advice for kids out there, run by your grandparents and parents. Okay, all right. So, uh, and if it didn't meet grandma, if it, if it didn't get grandma's seal of approval, it wasn't long before I broke up with her. Why? Because grandma, with God-given discernment, could see things that I could not. I treated, uh, uh, excuse me, I trusted, I trusted her wisdom and discernment. I'm so thankful. That God gave me a grandmother and a mama that, just like in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, verse 15 says this, How from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through Christ Jesus. That blessing of learning the scriptures and having the, learning the faith from a very, very early age, infancy. I'm also extremely thankful for my wonderful wife, Denise. You're doing a great job. I have a wreck. <laughs> uh, Y'all, yeah, yeah, just a lot of memories come back. Good stuff, good stuff, but powerful stuff. We both have gone through some growing pains, uh, but she too loves the Lord, has strong character, doing a wonderful job raising Ellie to love the Lord and to love the Scripture. And uh, to pray with her and comfort her. Thank you for being a great mom. Uh, God has had, had a profound impact on my life because of women of God. 
I am forever grateful for each and every one of them. Their love for Jesus, their obedience to Jesus, and their love for me. And you can have that same impact on the next generation as well. Proverbs chapter 31 says this. It speaks of a woman of noble character. And this is, I pick it up in verse 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Be a woman of God, ladies. Be a woman of God. Be a godly wife and mother. You can have a profound impact into eternity. Be God's people. Never, never underestimate what God can do through your life by you being faithful, by loving Him, and by loving others in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to uh, close things differently today. <clears throat> We're going to close with a, close with a word of prayer, and then I'll, I'll share what we do here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. Lord, for who you are, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you, God, for our moms. We thank you, Lord, for their walk with you and their faith. And God, we pray that uh, you continue to encourage our moms and uh, help them, God, to walk with you each day and uh, continue to set a godly example and to continue to uh, pour their lives, God, into the little ones and to help the little ones grow in their faith. Uh, God, thank you for the blessing of my family has been to me and that other families have been to them. And uh, Lord, please encourage your church, build up your church. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, not forget what look to be small things have a profound impact over time. So help us love you, to love you first and to love people second. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a closing uh, hymn, and then after our closing hymn, we are uh, there will be a gift. And uh, <clears throat> there'll be some things out there in the foyer for you, but we'll close with a closing in. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, I apologize for being more emotional. I don't know why. Hate distorting the emotions that you study it. I almost lost my mama this year. So she's still with us, praise God. And uh, a lot of memories from when I was little coming back to it. Anyway, thank you all so much. We have a gift for all the ladies, all the moms and all the ladies as well. Uh, have a flower and also <coughs> two flowers to choose from and one's on one table and the kids should be back there to hand out the flowers and then there's something on the other table for you too <coughs> thank you all very much god loves you we love you uh, i'm gonna ask mr mike if he would uh, close with the word of prayer for us please yeah i'll just sit in <laughs> <laughs> 
them we uh, we thank you for moms. Lord, I personally thank you for Noah and Rita and Leota. They played an important part in my development as a man. And uh, I truly loved each one of them. Lord, I thank you for I thank you for those people that fill that role. They may not be birth parents. They may not have, have been able to, to do that for whatever reason. But indeed, they've been a mom to someone. They've helped in the upbringing of little ones. They've helped with the development of character. There were strong women in the Bible, Lord, and there are strong women in the world today. We ask that all those ladies that, that fit the bill this morning, that you will bless them even more. And that we would bless them today as well and thank them for all that they have done. Forgive us when we fail you. Forgive us of our sins and help us always to do what is right in your sight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Love y'all. How about ladies first? Y'all can hit me get your flower. <laughs> Love you. Hey, you did a great